Hello guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. In this video, we'll see the question path with minimum effort. The question here states that you are a hiker preparing for an upcoming hike and you are given heights, a 2D array of size, rows, cross column, where a particular cell represents the height of that cell. You are situated in the top left cell 0, 0,0 and you hope to travel to the bottom right cell. You can move up down, left or right and you wish to find a route that requires the minimum effort. Now what is a minimum effort or an effort? A route's effort is maximum absolute difference in heights between two consecutive cell of the route. We need to return the minimum effort required to travel from top left to bottom right cell. Now let's see the example and then we'll understand the question more so given this example if you see this is the designed path with output as 2 now why do we get 2 if you see the difference between any two consecutive cell that is 1 3 or 3 5 5 3 or 3 5 the maximum amongst these is 2 similarly if you see this path over here it is 1 2 which has a difference of 1 again this has a difference of 0 0 but if you see the difference over here from 2 to 5, the dis difference becomes 3 and that's why the effort becomes 3. And this is the maximum of the effort that you will be spending in traveling through this path. And thus your effort is 3. Amongst these two paths, the minimum effort would be on this path that is 2 and so the output is 2. In the example 2, if you see, this is the one with a constant effort of 1 and rest all the path if you see any path you will get a effort which is more than one at least for one consecutive cell and thus the output would be just one for these path over here if you see along this path the effort is zero if you take any other path you will have to come across two and the effort would go up to one and so you take this path which has an effort of zero that you give it as an output in the constraints, we are given that you can have a matrix of 1 to 100 rows and columns and the height or the value of the cell can range from 1 to 10 raised to 6. So, the maximum effort that you would have to spend would be 10 raised to 6. In the hints, if you see, it is said that consider the grid as a graph where adjacent cells have an edge with cost of difference between the cells. If you are given a threshold k, check if it is possible to go from 0, 0 to the last cell using only edges of the cost which is less than the threshold. And third is for that you can apply binary search to find the value of k. We will see this binary search part a little later. First, let's try to apply the basic algorithm which is a dextrase algorithm that would be helpful for finding the shortest path in the weighted graph. So let's just go ahead and see what this algorithm will look like. So I've taken this first example and let's just try to visualize what we were talking about as how do we find the output. If we go from this path, the maximum difference or the number that you are getting is 2. While if you are taking this path, the maximum number that you are getting is 3. Now the minimum of these two efforts is 2 and thus the answer is 2. So what we are going to do over here is we'll take an efforts matrix which would initially store the maximum number and we'll also take a min heap to find the minimum of the paths as we are moving along. So we'll be starting from 0, 0 and we'll check which path is minimum and follow that path. And while we get to process this last cell, we stop and return the distance or the effort that we have for that particular cell. So let's start processing with the first one. Initially, we'll put the effort as 0 and row and column as 0. So this is an integer array that represents this particular thing. For the 0, 0 column, efforts would be 0 as we are initially standing at that particular cell and its row and column is 0, 0. Now, we start popping from the min heap or the priority queue. While popping the element, we'll see in what directions can we go. We cannot go to these and these directions as they are out of the bounds. So we go over here. Now how is the distance calculated for these cells? The distance over here would be the maximum of either 
the distance of popped element or the distance that we can find by doing a absolute difference between these elements. So over here for 0 comma 1 that is this particular cell the distance would be the maximum of 0 or the absolute difference that is 2 minus 1 which would give me 1. So the maximum of 0 and 1 is 1 and so we keep this as 1. Similarly for this cell the distance would be maximum of 0 or 3 minus 1 which gives us 2 and so this becomes our final thing and now we also need to check whether we really want to go to these cells. To check that we'll see if we have this distance that is less than the distance present for that particular cell in our efforts matrix. Over here 1 and 2 is lower than maximum value from the integer and so we will be deciding to process these nodes further and so we add those in the queue. With adding those we also update the distance in the distance or effort in the effort matrix. Next thing we pop is the one that has the minimum distance in this priority queue. While we pop from the min heap, the one with the minimum distance should be popped and this gives us this particular thing. From here we can go in this three directions and similarly as we had calculated the distance, we will calculate over here also. For 0, 2 it would be maximum of either 1 or 2 minus 2 which gives us 1. Similarly for 1, 1 it would be maximum of 1 or 8 minus 2 which is 6 and similarly for 0, 0. Now what are the nodes that we can process? We can process all the nodes and so we add all of them in the priority queue and we update their distances in the effort matrix. Again we will pop from the min heap and again we will check the distance and update that in the effort matrix and add the ones that we need to process in the min heap. We will continue doing this particular thing till we reach our final cell. So over here in this particular case we can see that we get a distance for 0, 1 and 1, 0 as 1 and 2. But if we see in our effort matrix, it is already filled with the same distances. So do we need to process them? No. We can just move ahead. And now again over here, the 2 comma 2 would need to be processed. And so we add that in the priority queue and move ahead. Now we take this one and here we'll process the node for this particular cell and we'll update the effort for this as 5 is minimum. How did we find this 5? 5 is maximum of either 2 or the difference between 3 and 8 which gives us 5. So we update this cell and we add the remaining values in the priority queue. Again we go ahead and pop and add whatever we need in the priority queue. Now again we do the same and keep adding the elements in the queue. Now this time when we pop we get an element which is the last element and as we have reached the last cell, thus we stop and we return the distance that is stored in the efforts matrix for here. So while we reached here, this distance got updated to 2 and that is our answer. So I hope you are clear with what we are doing in this particular approach. Now we will go ahead and code this one. Okay, the first thing that we are going to do is take variables m and n that will represent the rows and column length. After this, we'll be taking an efforts array and we'll fill that array with the maximum value from the integer. After this, we'll need a priority queue and we'll add the first initial value in the priority queue. In this priority queue, we are taking an ordered priority queue that will be ordered by the first element from this integer array that we are taking. So this integer array would be representing distance, row and then column. After creating this, we will add our initial value. So now comes the looping part. While the priority queue is not empty, we will first pop an element or pull an element. So int minimum I will take is equal to pq dot pull. From this minimum we will extract the distance row and column. After this 
we first check whether this distance is greater than or less than the effort value that is present in our matrix. If this particular distance is greater than the one that is present in our effort matrix, we do nothing but continue. And if this is the last cell, we just return the distance. If this is not the case, we will be going in each direction. So for that, let's take the direction array. So these would be our four directions in which we will be going and over here we will go in each direction. So for each direction in DIR, we will calculate the new row and new column. So after that we will first check whether this new row and new column is in our range. So for that we say if new row. If this is the case, we will be finding the new distance. It would be the maximum of either the distance or the absolute difference between the new and the old cell. Once we have this new distance, we check if it is greater than or less than the value present in the effort matrix. So if this new distance is less than the distance that is present in the effort matrix for this particular row and column we need to update it and add that particular point or cell in the priority queue once everything is done we will need to return some value as it has an signature that has a return value of int so we can return either 0 or minus 1 or anything and that's all about the code let's run this and it gives a perfect result let's submit this and it got submitted so the time complexity for this particular approach is same as what is there for Dijkstra's algorithm which is e log v and here we have e edges and e is equal to m into n while vertexes is also equal to m into n so the time complexity would be m into n log m into n and the space complexity is m into n to store this efforts matrix so now let's go ahead and see how we can use binary search for this particular question so we can apply binary search in this because we have the lower and higher bound for the effort that could have been spent. The upper bound is the maximum value that would be in the heights array which is 10 raised to 6. So we can take that value and we can find a threshold value for which we need to find a path in this particular heights matrix and see if we get a path we can reduce the threshold and see if we get a path for that particular threshold. So in that way we can apply binary search. Suppose if we had a threshold as 2. So in this particular problem we can get a path with the threshold as 2 and so we can say that okay there exists a path if we go below this if we say is there a path with effort as 1 in this matrix we would have got no and so we would have given 2 as our answer. So that's the basic gist of the idea behind the binary search. Now let's go ahead and see how the code for that looks like. So rather than typing the code out I'll just explain you how the code looks for binary search approach. So this is the code. And if you see, we have the directions array that we had before. Here is the start, that initial start is 0 and this is the upper bound, which is 10 raised to 6. We have variables for m and n and this is what we generally do in binary search. While start is less than end, we find the mid and we have a boolean visited array over here to mark a position as visited, whether we have visited a particular cell or not. After this, we would see whether we have a path in this heights array 
starting from 0 comma 0 with the visited boolean array which is initially false for every particular cell and with the threshold as the midpoint that we have found out with this formula and given this initial value that is the value for the particular 0 comma 0th cell. If we have a path what we need is we need to shrink our window and so we do end equal to mid and go to the left half. If there wasn't a path we would have gone to the right path and so we do start equal to mid plus 1. Finally at the end we return start. Now while finding the path we first check the boundary conditions. In the boundary conditions we have whether this has gone out of the range that is less than 0 or greater than the m and n values or if this particular cell was already visited or if this particular value or the distance was greater than the threshold. If these were the cases, we would have returned false. Otherwise, if we reach the end points, that is we reach the last cell, then we return true. And otherwise, what happens is we'll mark the current cell as visited by marking this as true. And then for each direction, we'll go and see whether we have a path. If we have a path, we return true, otherwise we return false. So let's run this code for all the examples and this gives a correct result and let's try to submit this code and it got submitted. So the time complexity for this particular approach would be m into n that is the number of edges log of the maximum value that we have that is this 10 raised to 6 and the space complexity still remains m cross n because we are taking a boolean visited array. So that's it for today guys. I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.